Despite the violence of the day, the effort to delay the certification continued. That evening, Rudy Giuliani called several of President Trump's closest political allies in the hour before the joint session resumed. Representative Jim Jordan and Senators Marsha Blackburn, Tommy Tuberville, Bill Haggerty, Lindsey Graham, Josh Hawley, and Ted Cruz. We know why Mr. Giuliani was calling them, because at 7.02, he left a voicemail for Senator Tuberville, which later became public. Let's listen to just the start of it. Senator Tuberville, or I should say Coach Tuberville, this is Rudy Giuliani, President's lawyer. I'm calling you because I want to discuss with you how they're trying to rush this hearing and how we need you, our Republican friends, to try to just slow it down so we can, we can get these legislatures to get more information to you. Mr. Giuliani did not even mention the attack on the Capitol. Instead, he was pushing on behalf of President Trump to get members of Congress to further delay the certification. Even though some members did proceed with objections, Vice President Pence and Congress stood firm and successfully concluded the joint session in the early morning hours of January 7th. Here are some of what members of the President's party said in the days and weeks after the attack. There's no question, none, that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. No question about it. The people who stormed this building believed they were acting on the wishes and instructions of their president. And having that belief was a foreseeable consequence of the growing crescendo of false statements, conspiracy theories, and reckless hyperbole which the defeated president kept shouting into the largest megaphone on planet Earth. The violence, destruction, and chaos we saw earlier was unacceptable, undemocratic, and un-American. It was the saddest day I've ever had as serving as a member of this institution. Madam Speaker, today the People's House was attacked which is an attack on the republic itself. There is no excuse for it. A woman died, and people need to go to jail. And the president should never have spun up certain Americans to believe something that simply cannot be. Well, after three in the morning, Congress certified the 2020 election results. Soon after, this statement by President Trump was posted on Dan Scavino's Twitter account because the president's account by now had been suspended. As you can see, President Trump stuck with his big lie that the election was stolen. But he did say there would be an orderly transition. We learned, though, that the statement was not necessarily his idea. Jason Miller, a campaign advisor, told us that after the joint session started, he heard nothing from President Trump or the White House about assuring the nation that the transfer of power would take place. So Mr. Miller took it upon himself to draft the statement and call the president at 923 that night to convince him to put it out. Let's listen to what he had to say about the call. Did he disagree with something that you had put in the statement, some particular word or phrase that, that he did not want included? Uh, I'd say just a, uh, a, he wanted to say peaceful transition. And I said that ship's kind of already sailed. So we're gonna say orderly transition. Uh, that was that was about the extent of disagreement or, or pushback from the conversation. 